are used to me doing silly stuff. <laughs> kind of expect me to do silly stuff. So we should be cool. popping up here. It looks like we're live. Yay. We are live. Yippers. That's awesome. So for those of you that are hopping on early, this is my friend, Emily. And I've known Emily for years. And we um, lived in the same town for a while in Albuquerque. But then we... Um, both moved into different places. She's now in Texas and I'm in Florida, but we've stayed in touch. And yeah. um, I, we just, I just wanted to talk a little bit today with Emily about some of the things that she's done, some of the struggles that she's had in becoming kind of a self-employed. I mean, you're, you're not just self-employed, but you're a self-employed educator. Like you're helping other people achieve their dreams of being self-employed. And I think that's fantastic. So thanks. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and why did you decide you wanted to be self-employed? You know what? It was, speaking of Albuquerque, uh, that's kind of where it all happened. You know, I quit my job one Tuesday morning. I was super young. I think I was 22 years old. And I quit my job on a, Sunday mor on a Tuesday morning in Houston, Texas. And I moved to this town on Saturday because it had a cool name. And that was Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then I woke up on Sunday morning and realized I didn't have a job. Nice. <laughs> I, I didn't really think about that part, but it started to make a whole, whole lot of sense why my parents were super upset about me doing what I did because I was also a single mom and right. I literally just picked up and said, I don't want to do this anymore, which is kind of how I've operated my entire life. It looks like, you know, now that I can look back and see all the things. And so I was in engineering at the time, engineering design, and I opened up a yellow pages and started looking through engineering companies and started calling them and just telling them what I did. And it turned out that I had a really unique skill. And so in order for a engineering company back then to be able to get contracts with Sandia National Labs, with the DOE, with even the DOT Department of Transportation, um, locally or federally, they had to have one of me that operated this particular piece of software. Nice. And so I started contracting with multiple companies so that they could say they had that person on staff and they could get those, get that. So um, that's where it all started. And it allowed me to be a stay at home single mom and, you know, afford, afford life and kind of learn a new way to do work. And then I, I saved up enough to be able to buy my own software and my own computer so that I could actually even be home even more. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. I've always been very entrepreneurial um, and I've always admired you for your ability to do so and, oh. and actually afford to live that way because a lot of people <laughs> have the ideas and they have the, the, the concept of wanting to do that, but they're either afraid to take the leap or they just don't have the skill set yet that they need to do yeah. it. So. Yeah, or how to, a lot of people I, I find have have a skill, have a craft, and it can be tough sometimes to figure out how to monetize it, right? That, that's really the disconnect that happens for a lot of people or get enough of enough work in order to really recover the, the income and be able to pay for the benefits and the other things that really are wrapped into that, the hourly wage, if you will, right. of, a, of well, a job. For sure. Yeah. Like, cause if you have a, a corporate job, there are benefits and things that you get that you don't realize how costly like yeah. life insurance and health insurance and those things can be when you get out on your own and have to take care of it. And especially having a, a child, you know, you might be able to kind of bumble through life as an adult without an insurance policy on, you know, for health insurance, as long as you're healthy and you're not doing any kind of extreme sports, but <laughs> If you're clumsy yeah. and or you have children that have a tendency to jump off of things or break bones or anything, insurance is play very, with very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the tangible things. Right. So a lot of people I, I hear the story of, you know, I'm, I'm making um, 25 bucks an hour at work and they're billing me up seventy five dollars an hour. I'm going to quit my job and go charge seventy five dollars an hour, which is fine. But one of the things they don't realize comes in that $75 an hour. And the reason they're filling you out at that is all the other overhead. You know, the person that's taking care of your HR, the person that's managing and making sure you have time off and, and invoicing and collections and all the other business pieces. 
is what's wrapped up on top of your benefits is what's wrapped up in that, you know, $75 an hour. And so people, um, or they want to come home and make $25 an hour and be able to keep all of it. Well, that's not realistic either because you still have to pay self-employment tax. You, you, you're still taxed on it. Yeah. And self-employment tax takes a big chunk out of your income, especially if you're self-employed, because like when you're working for a business, they're helping you with some of those taxes. They're paying a portion of your taxes and people don't realize that. So that's a big change. Yeah. There's, there's a lot that they're required, you know, un unemployment tax they're required to pay for um, workers comp they're required to pay for a, a lot of those things that come in there. Now I'm not sitting here saying that, Hey, you should keep your job. If you hate it and you really want to go, go do the, your own thing. I'm like, yay, let's do that. Let's figure out a way to get you there because I love it. I mean, freelancing allowed me to have a really amazing life. I mean, I've lived on a sailboat. I've done, I've traveled, you know, parts of the world. I've required to pay for it. It's just been really fun. Yeah. Awesome. For sure. Yeah. And I've done, I've done a lot of things. I mean, this is the second time in my life that I've been self-employed and um, I did it in Albuquerque. I was, yeah selling real estate and doing um, promotional products. Yep. And when I decided to quit my corporate job in Missouri and move to Albuquerque, I took what little savings I had and I packed everything in my car that would fit and I sold everything else. And I just drove to Albuquerque. And fortunately I had friends there that I could stay with and they were very helpful and, you know, helping me meet new people. And I just decided the only way I was ever going to be able to, make it in a real estate and promotional products industry world was to just start networking. I was very shy. I had never done any networking before. I didn't know what I was doing. And I mean, that's how I met Emily was I, I just got out and started networking. I started looking up networking events and I just started going and I would yeah. show up all by myself with a handful of business cards and I would just start passing them out to people. And I still have some amazing friends that live in Albuquerque because of those times that I stepped outside of my comfort zone and just started introducing myself to people. Um, yeah. But the thing that you did different is you had people get coffee together. I mean, cause that's what I remember is getting together at that Starbucks. I believe it was at their own new bank or one to vote. Yeah. Yeah. On to vote Academy or something. Anyway. Um, yeah. yeah. That's how long I've been away from Albuquerque is I can kind of remember the streets, but one to vote and Academy don't anyway. Yeah, and, you're um, like, uh. <laughs> and we had yeah, and we hung out together and kind of got to know each other and what what was going on in your life and things like that, and that's what created the friendship and the relationship, and that's why we're having this conversation today. So that was the one thing that I felt like you did different than just going to a networking event and passing cards out because that's that can be annoying. Yeah, that's awesome. To, well, I don't know how I came up with that idea. Somebody might have given it to me. I'm not sure, but. I love just meeting up with people and I've done it a couple of times here, but I need to do a lot more of it here because I think it, it absolutely affects your ability to, to grow a business. If you're working for yourself, it because does. even if the person you meet isn't somebody that has a product or service that you can personally use, or they might not be able to use the product or service that you have, they might know somebody that needs to meet you, or you might know somebody that needs to meet them. And I used to always tell everybody I was going to start a website that was just called, I know a girl. And I was just going to start connecting people to each that other. That would be cool. And I never did do that. I should, but yeah, that was like where my specific, like my niche was getting to know people and connecting other people to each other. Unfortunately, I wasn't really making any money connecting other people to each other, but <laughs> it was a very amazing learning experience and it helped me, get out of my shell and be able to talk to people. And I mean, I do public speaking and live videos now for fun. <laughs> and I would have never done that 10 years ago. Right. Never. Well, no. what I, what I find really interesting about networking is people get really, kind of like you, you were talking about people get really scared of it. Oh, I got to go and I got to meet people. And, and I was like, wait a minute, you would go to a party that was a friend of yours. And when I say party, we're, we're older. So it's more like you get together at somebody's house. And there's going to be people there probably that you don't know. And you would go in and have conversations with those people and get to know them. Yeah. Think of networking the exact same way. It's a room full of people that you will probably not know. Maybe one or two people, you know, depending on how often you get out and network. But what if you removed the question of how many people can I meet here today, tonight and how much money can I make off of it and things like that? And what if you just said, hey, I want to go meet 
one or two very interesting people that I can go have coffee with. Right. Or and lunch or whatever. If all you're doing is shoving business cards in people's faces, you're not going to make those we connections. Don't, yeah, we don't respond. We just, no, we just I mean, if you leave a, mar a networking, I mean, I literally have a stack of business cards here on my desk. I was going to find it, but there's, you know, but it's like this thick and I can't dig through all of those every time I think I need something. So getting to know people and speaking of people, as you guys hop on, let us know where you're watching from, but oh, yeah. um, getting to know people makes such a big difference. And I used to actually write on the back of people's business cards, blonde hair, red shirt, likes dogs, yes. lives at, you know, because sometimes the business card itself isn't enough to make that connection. Yeah. But if you remember, like you can remember what they look like, you're like, oh yes, I really liked her. And then you can reconnect with that person. So I think it's Absolutely. pretty awesome. Yeah, and you said you'd, you'd made a statement that, that you weren't really making money by connecting people and all that kind of stuff. And I can just tell you, it just takes time. It does. Right? So it took years of me doing that kind of stuff before it got to the point where, you know, when I migrated into website design, I got to the point where I wasn't even having to go look for work because right. I had a big enough group of people that I had done enough for, you know, I connected them to the people that they needed to be connected with and vice versa, that it began to, to right. come back around. And that's another huge misgiving, if you will, about networking. It's like, I'm going to go networking. I'm going to make money. Yeah. And that can happen. It, it doesn't not happen. But if you want it to, if you want to turn a freelance business around a single owner business around to where you're not having to go to networking events just to sustain your business, then it really goes into that relationship building or strategic partnerships. Right. And that takes time. Right. Well, and I think I, when I joined BMI, I, I learned a lot from BMI, although I wasn't like a huge, like, yeah, fan of the way it all worked specifically, not mm. that there's anything wrong with it, but yeah, I learned just a lot from being a part of that community. Yeah. And, um, you know, some of the best relationships I have came from sitting down with those people once a month or whatever it was once a week, the consistency and, of it. Yeah. And I was scheduling individual meetings with all of those people. And I still have friends that message me every once in a while about, Hey, what have you been up to? What are you doing? This is something I'm doing new. Tell me what you're up to. And we know we just, we still network with each other. And I still send people to my friends. Like if somebody says I need, you know, insurance or I need this or I need that, you know, I still know who to send them to. That's and awesome. being yeah. that go-to person has been really amazing for me in my, you know, my career was just having people know that they could come to me and ask me a question. Yeah. yeah you, you want those reasons for them to come to you. Right. Right. And so that is, that's super, super helpful. Right. And BNI is where, you know, when I, when I begin to trend, um, convert out of the, the engineering space and get into website design, the whole world was different. You know, I didn't have a group of people or, you know, just, like the engineering space, you just call local engineering companies and they pretty much almost always needed help, at least back then. Web design, I didn't have that. You know, SEO, I didn't have that. So that's when I got into BNI. And that's really where, like you said, it, it taught me how to network. It taught me how it taught me how consistency sitting across the table, just like you said, from the same people every week for multiple years. I knew it takes that long to really learn what people do, what their niche is why they're really good at that. So that when someone comes in, comes up to me and asks me for a realtor, I don't just give them that realtor's name because I'm in a BNI group with them. I got, I give them the realtor's name because I like this thing about them and they did this and they did that. And I learned it over time and granted, you know, you're not going to like every single person in your BNI group if you do BNI, but that's why you can go in and, and look at other BNI groups too. And right. say, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's so many different kinds of networking. I just saw a couple people hop on. I see M and Morgan guys say hi as you're hopping on and let us know what it is that you guys do for a living. I know there's a couple people that are self-employed that just popped on here. And cool. um, Emily is a great resource. She's what, well, tell us about the company that you started. Well, what I do now is I, like you said, I help freelancers, single owner businesses, um, learn those business skills. You have a, you have a craft, you have a skill already. You don't, you don't need my help typically to do that. Um, unless you do website design, I can help you with that, I guess, if you needed it. 
<laughs> Otherwise, uh, it's it's all about teaching you how to do those skills. So we started the, the conference. It all started with freelance conference. So if you haven't been to a conference specifically for freelancers and how to run a freelance business, freelanceconference.com. Our next um, conference is going to be late next year in, in Denver, Colorado. So I'm super excited about that. Yeah. Colorado. And then, yeah. And then from there, it just kind of blossomed into other stuff. I, I'm, I'm definitely a solutions person. I, I enjoy that space. I enjoy creating stuff. So after a couple of years of running the conference, I quit my website design company and put everything into the conference and we've designed, we've launched the freelancers choice awards. So those nominations will start up here in a couple of months. We've, we're in the process of launching a freelance community fund where people can donate into the fund and the other freelancers can, can apply to get some financial help going and getting training and stuff like that. We've launched a community so that we can not only share projects with each other, but get to know each other, even if we're not in the same town. And I'm sure there's a, we just launched a podcast last week and oh, cool. called Freelancers Guide to Life. Let me see. I'm sure there's other stuff. But everything's on freelanceconference.com yeah. because it has actually gotten quite big. Great. And one of the things that I'm really enjoying now is starting to have these conversations with other companies that are creating portable benefits, you know, benefits programs and platforms specifically designed for freelance business owners so that we can create our benefits program so that it matches what we need, not just what someone wants to kind of give to us. Here's your bucket and everybody, you know, gets the same bucket. Right. So there's some really fun stuff happening and changing in this. In this well, that's space. super cool. I didn't even know that. So what do you think? Um, so not just people that have already decided that they want to start their own business, but what about people that that think maybe just maybe they might maybe. want to work from home or they might want to make a little extra money on the side or they they might want to, you know, do something a little outside of the box like that maybe they their family or friends are like, I don't know about that. So what, what advice would you give to somebody who's kind of entrepreneurial in spirit and doesn't really know where to start? My first thing to tell you is, you know, it, it's actually really hard to, to pick a first thing because it's almost like a chicken and the egg. And so <laughs> right. I kind of tell people the first thing is to really get to know yourself. Well, what, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You know, you hear conflicting stuff. Some people saying, find your weaknesses and work on your weaknesses. And other people say, and find your weaknesses and, and, and pawn those things off, you know, hire somebody to do them. You don't always have the money to hire somebody to do them. And the other thing is if you're new into this, if you don't have a good business um, acumen background, that's okay. It's learnable, but don't go out and just start hiring people to do things. If you don't know how to do it yourself, because you don't know what they're doing. It's really easy to get taken through the cleaners. If you don't know what they're doing, um, now I know that means a lot of learning curve stuff and some people are like, well, I, just don't, I just don't want to do that. Well, that's your call. I'm just telling you that I think you're going to benefit better in the long run. If you take some time and do your own books for six months, let's just say. Right. You At go least that have process. working knowledge of what's going on right. there. Yeah. Right. Go, to, go take a class, understand what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to, why they're doing what they're doing. And so when they come to you and they say, Hey, we're going to completely redesign your entire chart of accounts. One, you know what a chart of accounts is. Two, you'll know to ask um, why, and they may have a very good reason for it. And you'll also know what that's going to impact as far as the rest of your books, you know, things like that. Right. You're like going, why is it going to cost $2,000 to do my chart of accounts? And why do I need, maybe you don't need it. You can make those decisions because you have the right. information. And two, the second thing I would make sure that you already have in place. And if you don't go get it as med immediately is to start playing with that networking. Go and find your tribe, go and find those two or three people that are willing to mentor you so that you have a go-to person because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And there is not enough classes on the face of the planet to teach you all the things that you don't know, because you may not need to know that. Right. Well, and the problem that most people have, I see is you don't know what questions to ask because you don't have the experience. Right. So if you put yourself in a room with people that are doing things that are similar to you, it, it at least starts getting your brain going and maybe you can start asking some of those questions. So like people say, what's your weakness? Well, I mean, maybe you haven't found yeah. a weakness yet that needs to be worked on. I mean, we all have them, but I mean, maybe you haven't found one that applies to your business or whatever. So right. 
sometimes you have to dive in to find those weaknesses and to understand them. Yeah, because unless you are, you know, the first one that usually comes up for people is networking, the, the conversation we're having earlier. And usually that's not necessarily a weakness is that they're looking at it as I have to walk into this room and tell all these people what I do. And the truth is you don't have to walk in the room at all. And secondly, you don't have to tell anybody in there what you do unless you want to. You can literally just go into that room and go meet some fun people Yeah, and find out what they do and then go home and say, you know what, this person looks fun, you know, right on the back of the card, F for fun or something like that, right? And then reach out to them and say, hey, you were really interesting. I love to have a cup of coffee. Here's the thing to not do. Don't go invite them to have a cup of coffee and ask them everything about how to start your own business. Right. It's, it's tough. You know, it's their time. They're actually taking time away from their business to have coffee with you. It's a long, it's a longer play, but actually be present, actually just get to know them. Right. And there's a really good chance that in that process, they're going to ask you, so what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm right. just now, I'm just now trying to get this thing started. And, um, you know, whatever the next question is. Yeah. And I don't, you know, and just tell them, I, I don't want to like use up all your time trying to get me off the ground. I appreciate any help that you can give me, but I really just want to know about you, you know, but be authentic, be real about that. Right. Almost more like a first date, you know, like kind you want to get to know the person, you want to understand what makes them tick. And, you know, maybe if they understand a little bit about what makes you tick, they can give you some ideas. But I mean, it's just like walking up to somebody that does comedy for fun and saying, say something funny. And they're like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people, you don't know how to help somebody unless you kind of understand what they're going through. So you kind of have to build that relationship first. Yeah. And it, I mean, you may end up with another, a, a new really great friend. You may end up with just a cup of coffee. It, you know, you, you really don't know, but if you can't be there authentically and be present, don't, don't go is my, yeah. is my two cents. Yeah. Well, and relationships take time to build. You don't build relationships overnight. And, you know, if you, if you meet somebody that you're networking with and you want to, continue that relationship, then you have to turn it into at least some sort of a friendship. You have to be able to communicate back and forth. And, you know, if something tragic would happen in their life, like, you know, a car accident or, you know, a family member get, becomes ill or something, would you feel comfortable enough calling them and saying, hey, I heard about what happened. How can I help? If you can't say that to someone, then did you really get to know them all that well? You know? Yeah. Or even if you're not saying, how can I help? Even, you know, I, I, I really like that. Could you call them, send them a message, send them a text, whatever, you know, your relationship um, identifies with and say, I'm, I'm really sorry this is happening. Yeah. And if you don't feel comfortable enough reaching out to somebody and at least sub giving them some support, then you probably haven't connected with that person well enough yet. And I mean, I think I can work on that in some areas of my life yeah. where everybody can. Yeah. But, you know, if you if you want people to offer their knowledge and education and things like that to you, you can get it two ways. You can pay them for it or you yeah. can become their friend and not necessarily earn it, but absorb it through osmosis, basically. By You know, they always say surround yourself with people that you admire because you can learn from yeah. them just by being in their presence. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great one. You know, watch people, watch what they're doing and why they're doing it. And if you don't know why they're doing it, just reach out and say, hey, man, I just, I love that you just released this podcast. Why did you do that? Was it hard? You know, and, and they'll say, no, it wasn't hard. I just did this. I just, or they may tell you, it's so freaking hard. Don't do this. <laughs> right. I don't know what they'll tell you. But, um, you know, and, and that's where it, it is super helpful to take. You know, we talked about the weak skills, the strengths and weaknesses is it is super helpful to go through and and find some of those, um, I'm sure they're out there, kind of like a skills assessment. So you can see what your strengths are. You know, are you technically minded? So, and I'm gonna bring a podcast because it's kind of fresh on my mind right now. And right. is, you know, maybe, maybe what you're doing is really um, a good idea for you to start a podcast, you know? And so, okay, I, I would love to start a podcast. I could meet some really great people. I could interview them. I could have that connection. I could bring people in and all this other stuff, but I don't, I barely know how to use my mouse. 
I, that, that might be kind of tough. I'm just saying yeah. if you're planning to do it all yourself. So really right. do some research on what is it, what does it look like to one, get the training to even just capture the audio and what do you need to have in your space around you so that you have good audio? What do you need to do? What kind of technology do you need? And then who do you need to hire? And what's, a, what's that going to run to have people do the tech work behind the scenes? Yeah. Well, and it takes time, right? So if you don't have the time to devote to doing something like that, yeah, maybe it's not time for you to start doing that yet. Like when I first got started, like being like on social media, everybody was like, well, you have to have a YouTube channel and you have to have Instagram and you have to have this. And that's a lot of stuff to keep up with. <laughs> and sometimes I just don't have anything to say. And I'm like, I don't, especially not for Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And I'm like, I, you, you don't <laughs> think the same thing on every single thing. Cause you have different followers that have different purposes for following you it can just be overwhelming and it can take up too much of your time. So sometimes when you're getting started, you have to start small and like focus in on an area and get really good at that area before yeah. you try to step into something else. So if you're just starting a business, starting a business and a podcast at the same time might not be a really great idea. <laughs> unless you're already in a situation where a podcast is like the right thing to start out with. So you have right. to weigh those options out. Yeah, everything that you bring on. I was at a, an, an event, it was years ago, and I was talking to people about, you know, starting up a freelance business and stuff. And there was this gentleman, and he said, everybody I talked to, every coach that I've ever had tells me that I got to go do social media, and I just don't like it. And I yeah. said, look, if you're not going to do it, if you're not really going to do it, it's not going to serve you. You don't go set up social media for the sake of having social media. You do it because you're going to embrace it and it's going to add as much to you as it adds to the people that are following you. And he was just like, really, I don't have to do social media. So no, you don't have to do it at all. There's no law. And there is people, more and more people every day, actually, that are doing more business without or with limited social media. Because like you said, if I'm not going to go over there on Twitter and tweet, then it's not going to do anything for me. Yeah, so what's, what's I don't even point? really understand how Twitter works. But that's for a whole nother... It is. It's actually my favorite platform, but, um, but yeah, it know. seems to me like that's a platform where people tend to um, voice their opinions more about things. I, I think it is because it's super, you know, things are just flowing through all the time. Yeah. And so it's super easy to go out there and just blow off some steam. Um, yeah. That's what I'm going to call it. And yeah. then move on because, you know, 20 people are going to see it. A few hundred people, depending on how many followers your followers you have. And then it moves on. Yeah, for sure. So let me see. Let's see. Let's see. I know I asked you some good questions already. <laughs> um, so uh, you kind of touched on this in the beginning, but tell me, like, how blessed are you that you took that leap in the very beginning and you went against what everybody else thought you should do and you just quit your job, started your own business? And I mean, I know that you struggled. Everybody struggles. Yeah. I but did. how blessed are you that you actually took that leap? Extremely. Yeah. I mean, to, to be able to sit here and have the career that I have and the life that I have, I, I think all of it, I can, I can um, say came from being a freelancer and, you know, had I continued forward and went ahead and moved forward and got my engineering degree, I'm sure I'd be working in an engineering company. I wouldn't know about this life. And who knows? I would feel just as blessed or more or less. I don't know. That's a good point. So it's a very hard question to, to answer. But would I still have the same dreams that I have now? Because my mindset would probably be different. Uh, I don't I, I just don't know. So all I can really say is uh, the life that I have now is really great. Yeah. And the life that I've lived, like you said, it, it wasn't easy. I mean, I could sit here and get excited about the things, the highlights, if you will, and talk about how wonderful my life was, but it was also really hard. Yeah. You know, and between it, it goes up and down, right? There's cycles to everything. So it wasn't yeah. always sunshine and roses, but it wasn't always bad either. I mean, it goes up and down. Yeah. Yeah. So working. So one of the hardest parts for me in being freelance was the isolation. And I didn't speaking of things that you don't don't know what you don't know. 
I didn't realize that's what was triggering those really, really hard, low, dark spots. Yeah, that happened to me this year. Yeah. So yeah. you're you know, you're sitting at home, you're feeling whatever it is you're feeling. It's not good, whatever yeah. it is. And so the first thing that makes sense to me to do is to not share this crap with everyone else. So I'm just going to stay home. Yeah. Right? So that, so that, uh, so I can minimize the amount of damage I might do. Cause you feel crappy and, and sometimes you want to take the crappiness off on, out on somebody else. And so some of that's just emotional intelligence, figuring out how to identify and work through that. Yeah. But I have learned that doesn't mean that I always do this, but I have learned that the quicker I will react to that and get out and just go to a co-working space and hang out with people that I know, even if I don't ever talk to them, but they're sitting over there and they're sitting over there and I'm with people can shift all that getting on my bike and going for a bike ride can shift it like that. And they are the hardest things to do. Yeah. It is so crazy. I know that I love to ride my bike. I know what it feels like when I hit that trail over there and I feel this is going to sound silly, but I feel, and I can hear the grit under my tires. It just somehow touches, literally reaches out and touches my soul. And I will sit right here and fight with myself for hours yeah. to go do a 30 minute bike ride. Yeah. I get that will it. change my entire day. Yeah. I struggled a lot this year. And part of the reason why I'm doing these interviews, because I don't know if you remember, but six months ago, I contacted you about doing a hundred interviews in a hundred days. Yeah. And I decided over time that that was going to be too much of an, too much pressure to put on myself. And I was already struggling with keeping everything together and, and doing all the things that I love to do. Um, so I just decided I was going to do it, but I was going to not put so many restraints on it, too, too many constraints. So, and I decided I'm still sticking with the same topic. It's, you know, about inspiring people to go after their dreams and do the things that they want to do. But I'm not going to put as much pressure on myself to get it done because there are other things that I want to do and exercise and taking care of myself is important to me. And it, it needs to be more important to me because I've kind of let that stuff slide over the last year. And I mean, my husband told me the other day, he was like, you look so pretty when you fix your hair. He's like, you really kind of have slacked off on doing that lately. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was true. I mean, it was absolutely true. I mean, I throw my hair in a ponytail and I just go about my day and, you know, I just, I haven't had a schedule. And that's some of the things about being self-employed that I didn't really realize was because normally if you have a full-time job, you're regimented. You get up at the same time every day, yep. you do the same things, you go to the office or wherever it is that you work. And then you have a lunch break, usually about the same time every day, you get off work about the same time every day, you go to bed about the same time every and night. And when you become self-employed, like going to college for the first time and you're like, I can stay up at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cocoa for breakfast or whatever, Cocoa Puffs for breakfast. But so you have to learn how to, manage your time. And that's something I think that really gives people a lot of problems when they first get started being self-employed. It really is. You know, they, you talk about lunch, right? So you have lunch. At, it's not just that you have lunch at the same time every day, but you know, you're going to have that break. Very rarely do when, at least when the few times I've been employed, did I have to work through lunch? Right. And, and even then it was, 99% of the time it was still optional. Nothing would have happened if I would have put that stuff off till one o'clock and did it after right. my lunch break. So you know that you're going to have a lunch break. It's almost completely, absolutely going to be there. So you can either decide where you're going to go or take your food with you. Mm -hmm. Now I have lunch sitting in the fridge right now for my day and I've got a really crazy day and there's a really very high chance that it'll still be sitting there tonight. You know, because I'll go grab something quick and I'll eat it. And that's, it's still something that I, I haven't made the, the highest yeah. priority yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I totally agree. So well, speaking of your day, we've been on here for about 35 minutes. I don't want to keep you. Is there anything that, that you really would love for people to know? And um, if somebody wanted to be a freelancer, like how would they reach you? How would they get in touch with your organization? Like what? What would they do to do that? The best way to do it is go to freelanceconference.com. There is a community, so it has you know membership up there. There's a there's a free level, so you can go in, in there. And that's a great place to go in and just say, hey, I'm, I'm new. This is what I'm doing. Because one of the first questions you're going to get asked is, 
what would you like to get out of this group that would make you or your business different in a year? And we read those, you know, and people, people come back and respond and let them know, let us all know that you, you know, you're, you're getting started and you need some mentoring or you need some feedback on this or thoughts on this. And that's what they're, they, that's what we're, we're here for. That's the best way to do it. Come to a freelance conference. I know it's a ways out. We're going to be doing a virtual event probably early in the year that allows even more people to go to that. And then we have the freelance business weeks, which you'll also see on the freelanceconference.com website. So there may be a freelance business week, which is a local event that happens in cities across the, the country. In fact, we have one coming up in Tampa, I think next year. Oh, really? So, cool. Yeah, it looks like it's Tampa, Miami, Austin, Denver, Portland, Buffalo. And then we're doing a freelance business week weekend in Corpus Christi. Cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. keep an eye out. Or if you're out there and you have, um, you have been freelancing for a while and you want to pull your local group together, your local freelance community together, let's chat. I love to work with people and help them do that and give them ways to, to pull people together and connect and, you know, do all the things that we've been talking about on a local level. Yeah. So don't be scared to chase your dreams, people. You can do it. And you can do it. it. It's hard, but you can do it. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you can do it alongside of what else you're doing. You know, you don't have to absolutely just throw everything out the window and, and go after something. You can work your way into it gently in most yeah. cases. And then you have to determine at some point you have to choose which one you're going to put your energy into. Um, but I think that chasing your dreams, if you don't have dreams, then it's hard to find joy in life and giving up your dreams just to do the day to day stuff is really not a great way to live. So I think that I don't care what your dream is. If your dream is to be a stay at home mom, then you have the right and the ability to chase after that dream. You just have to work through the details and figure out how you're going to make that happen. So I'm not saying you have to work from home to be successful. I'm not saying you have to have a corporate job to be successful, but in order for a person to be successful, they have to be happy with the choices that they've made and they have to have a certain amount of joy in their day to day life. Success looks yeah. different for me I, than it I does. for you. I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. So just know that it's not going to be super easy. It's the biggest thing that I want everybody to, to, to walk away from this with. Um, it, some of it's going to be super fun. Some of it's going to absolutely suck. And, uh, but if you tell me that you go to work every day and some days it's super fun and some days it absolutely sucks, well then it's, that's not a whole lot different. <laughs> right. But if this is something that you really want to do. Um, and you, like you said, you want to do it as a side hustle to start with and then turn it into your own thing. That's one of the things that we just talked about in the, the first podcast that we released last week was a gentleman that, you know, he'd done freelancing before, went back into the corporate space during that process, during that time period that he was in the corporate space, he, you know, got married, he bought a house, they had children. So he has two small kids at home and he's like, oh, you know what? I've gone from company to company to company and I it just, I, I'm a freelancer. So I went, oh, honey, I need to be a freelancer. It's like, well, you know what? You're responsible for this much of the income. We, you, you just can't, you know? And so they worked out a, 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 a timeline. This is how many hours she was willing to, I mean, he was willing to work after hours and realizing that she was going to have to give up having him around to help with stuff and until they got to X amount of their income. And then this is what they could afford to make it work for both of them and their family. So it can work. But I think most people want it to work tomorrow. And it, it's true. Doesn't. True. Yeah, it takes time. Well, I appreciate you so much. Thank you Thank for taking you. time out of your busy schedule. I love your background, the road to free. What is that? Free time. Um, yeah. Um, free time. If you guys want more information, you should join the group. I put the link in the comments there. Thank awesome. Thanks. Um, it's super cool that we made friends. Like it's been like 12 years or something. And, you know, we still stay in mm -hmm. contact. We might not talk every day, but you know, if one of us has something going on, the other one always reaches out and says, Hey, I see you. I'm here, you know? Yeah. So, and that's one of the things that, that networking really, really gives you is, is a larger community of people and you can find your tribe and finding your tribe is the most powerful thing that you will ever do in your life. Yep. And your tribe may not all sit in the same city. Right. 
for sure. Yeah. I love having my half a dozen people that are all over the place. I, I love my tribes too, you know, that are, that are in my communities, but it's important to have, you know, your half a dozen or whatever people, your go-to yeah. people. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And um, I can't wait to talk to you again sometime in the near future. All right. Thanks so much for having me on. Have a great day. Okay. Bye.